There we go. Yo, that's a long time. Get that out of here. All right, let's see here. Oof, tip that over. All right. <clears throat> Where do we start? There we go. That's always a good way to start. Welcome in, welcome in. I'm going to go grab a Mountain Dew. Because that is who runs my life. Mountain Dew is in charge of me. Huh, not sure what that is. And we'll take a look at it later. All right. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Second, third, who's there? Uh, yeah, no kidding there, uh, Universe. I um, I told you guys when I posted it, I was just going to start it at 7 bucks, and whoever bid highest would get it. I didn't think it'd go that high. So, uh, yeah, that was something. Hey, there's Justin. I got to hang out with Justin a little bit this weekend. Went to get some barbecue and uh, got a Chase Elliott car signed. I can actually show you. I have it here. Um... But I got a went to a Chase Elliott signing, and um, Justin got his Mountain Dew Kansas win uh, signed, and that was the one that had been sitting in my display case, the non-autographed one. When I said I had two of them, well, I was holding on to that one because he had uh, sold his whole collection to me a while back, and I told him he was going to want it back. And uh, sure enough, to, uh, this weekend was the day. So. Um, Baja Blast coming back. Yes, the Baja Blast is what we're going to be showing off. So I got to grab a Mountain Dew, um, but I'll be right back and we'll start doing some stuff. I got a, uh, I got a lot of stuff to show off. Okie dokie then. Now, as you can see in front of us are the next gen cars. Uh, these are the four of the five that were available at the track. I picked up one of each, so obviously you guys have probably by now seen the videos of them. Um, but yes, the only one that's not here is the discount tire Cindric car. That one actually has already been eBayed, like bought, paid, shipped, all that junk. So it's, it's already on its way to a new home. Um, so yeah, that'll be... Uh, Wait, on Friday, Hendrick's going to be dropping parts of Chase's Roval 2021 car. Oh, like sheet metal. That's a little weird that it's that late, but that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, so I think every car has either been listed or is listed on these next gens, um, which is kind of cool. I mean, as I said, I was able to get the review done, which was pretty awesome. And um, because I'm obviously a dealer, eventually I'll be having them come in for the website. And I figured, well, I may as well see if somebody wants it early. And boy, some of you guys out there really want them early. Went nuts over it, but I ain't gonna complain. Helps me uh, afford to go to the racetrack, you know. Uh, anyway, let's see here. Justin says 100% still can't believe he met Chase. Yes, uh, that's my second time getting a car autographed by Chase, and I'll, I'll I'll just go get the car right now and show you how well it turned out. Boom. Oh wow. Hold on, camera's too far back uh, or too far forward. So yeah, the uh, the signature when you're at an appearance turns out really, really, really good. You're far less likely to have it turn out that good at a track. That one was on pure luck that that turned out that well. So um, yes, getting the liquid color Baja Blast signed was was pretty good. I, I almost sold this car a couple years ago. Now it is cemented as mine forever now that it's been signed. So uh, that's definitely there. Um... We need to tweet that video where you show the signed Baja Blast car um, to Chase and tell him to skip the part where you say, very nice autograph, thank you. Uh, hey, can I be a moderator? I don't have any moderators so far. I'm pretty small, so I haven't had to mess around with that yet. Um, but eventually I probably will because I had some issues on the last stream where there were some, some bots. So um, 
I, I would definitely when I when I get to that point, I'll have uh, some type of application thing that just lets me go through to make sure uh, you know everything's kind of set in stone. I, I like to get to know the people, you know. Uh, but yes, I uh, want to meet Chase one day. Always keep an eye on the appearances. That's probably the at the racetrack. He's got a job to do, and so that's generally a little tougher to do, I think. They had other parts on, but never dropped the hood. Uh, maybe oh, so maybe just maybe get the hood. Um, yes, some very su yeah. No, that was I don't know what the who got in or whatever, but I blocked him and got him out of there. So uh, if somebody else shows up, I'll do the same thing to them because uh, I, I am monitoring the chat pretty closely because uh, I don't have that many people in the chat. You know, if I had to, you know, some of these guys have crazy chats and crazy amounts of them. So uh, you know. That, that's definitely something on there, but uh, as you probably saw in the title or in the thumbnail, this video, no, I'm just kidding. That's not sponsored by Mountain Dew, but um, that was the event pin, so I did pick up the Enjoy Illinois 300 race pin. Uh, now you can actually see all those pins waiting for cars, so you can see that upper right one. That's A.J. Elmendinger's uh, Indy car or Indy road course win, then Kyle Larson's Bristol win, Kyle Larson's Kansas win, and then Kurt Busch's win and Joey Logano. Again, Joey Logano win. I now have four Joey wins on the way. Like, one, two, three, and four. I, why? Why? Why do I have to see Joey win so many times? I almost could have saw Kyle win for a third time, which, you know, wouldn't have been the greatest thing. Ryan Blaney was running third. I was really hoping he would get a win. Um, but I guess, you know, another Joey. Woo! Um, Universe asks, what are my picks for Sonoma? Sonoma, I am actually going to pick a, probably, maybe a surprise, maybe not. Martin Cole Pern is back on the box, and I you don't go against the Pern star. Cole Pern is, is a legend, so I ain't betting against him. I know better. Cole Pern, Martin Truex Jr. back together. It's time to win a race. I think that's the way to do it. So, um, yes, I think that would be it, what's going on. But um, uh, Oh, yeah, what was I else? Oh, yes, I was going to go through the gateway. So we'll go through the gateway experience, and then I'll start digging into some die-cast stuff and showing you. But um, So gateway, I got down there on Friday, had the chase appearance Friday afternoon, or more like Friday morning-ish, you know, right at right at the change of the, the noon, whatever hour. Um, so the chase appearance was about 45 minutes north of the racetrack. Um, got there roughly two hours early, I think, somewhere in that window. Um, that's when I got and uh, met Justin and, and hung out with him in line, uh, waiting for that. I uh, don't actually know who the third person we were hanging out with for a while there was. But, um, yeah, just basically uh, we waited in line, and um, <laughs> it was oddly enough, I looked over, and the gas station in Illinois was $5.10 for gas. Uh, and then when you go back over to the Missouri side of the river, it was like 435 440 So for some reason, Illinois just hates their people. What can I say? Um but yeah, so went to that uh, appearance, got the the Baja Blast signed. My sister, she has a Kansas win elite as well. She got her Kansas win signed, uh, so now she has one more of her you know races seen in persons uh, or in person signed. Um, and so that was kind of Friday. Then we went to the track for practice day. I'm not gonna lie, that the crowd I saw there on Friday just for practice day was probably bigger than what I've seen at most truck races about anywhere i mean the fans in st louis were turning out for that race they were there friday afternoon just seeing race cars and boy they showed up big time and that was just on practice day uh as i said saturday was qualifying and truck day that was pretty dang busy for a truck race there was a lot going on um i mean a lot of people there to watch qualifying and, and the truck race so it was kind of impressive to see how many people showed up to gateway traffic wise was fine in and out both ways um i think sunday it got a little backed up closer to race time it got a little tighter um just because they didn't have a real good flow going in it's a little tougher the way they had it um they were kind of bringing everybody in and kind of a single file line and parking you you know to try and save on parking space so that everyone that wanted to park got parked um and so there was the only issue that I was seeing with that was that they were having issues getting, you know, a single file line move slower. So if they could have split the line and gone, you know, left lane goes in on the first entrance and the second lane goes on the second entrance, you got two sets of people parking cars. May have sped that up a little bit. But I went in early enough. It really wasn't too bad. It slowed down a little bit, but it wasn't bad. Um, but I was able to, you know, get in there plenty early too because I was going to see some stuff at the Kenny Wallace stage. Um, so yeah, uh, the the parking wasn't as bad. Now here's what I will say. They um, let's see. I don't even know how to explain this. So let's just say that this box, this set of boxes, this is the racetrack, and then there's a road, and then there's the parking lot over here. Okay. 
So there's a road that goes in between. And they had the road fenced off on each side. You could not walk across the road. You could not. It was completely fenced off. But they had skywalks. You walk up and walk down. Like, walk you up over the roadway. Uh, so they had three different crossways. Um, it's about three people wide. As you, you could squeeze three wide. Most people did, too, because most people don't want to go up and down stairs without a railing. They just want to make sure they don't trip and fall. So they, you know, stay on the side and have a railing to kind of keep their balance. Um, so, yes, there were three of them. Uh, one in the middle and then two on each side of the parking lots that would help you get up and over and into the track. Uh, those got a little clustered um, because it was such a narrow walkway. And I think the biggest issue is there are, there are fans that they, they're, they're older or, I mean, let's be honest, they're out of shape. And so there were people that struggled. Um, and, you know, so again, sometimes you're just out of shape. Sometimes they're just older. I mean, you know, you're 75 years old going up two flights of stairs isn't, isn't necessarily easy for you so and, and there's people that have disabilities too that we you know it's that stuff has to be considered um and i don't know if there's any you know they had some golf carts running back and forth but i do think that's one thing that could be improved upon whether it's finding a way to dig a tunnel that goes under the road or, or something of that nature that just allows a little bit easier movement um because that that i did see an, at least two or three people on that walkway really struggling uh you know needing to kind of catch their 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 balance and catch their breath a little bit they just you know stairs were not something that obviously they could handle very well so that's something that i don't again it's not for everybody i don't think i think most people handled it just fine but um you know those accommodations have to be available somewhere so that we can get those guys into the track without having anything dangerous or putting them in a diff you know a dangerous or, or difficult situation because we obviously want to make sure everyone enjoys the race and that's you know it's a little thing but you know considering it was our first cup event um you know really it's they did a great job it was just you know i'm, I'm nitpicking at little things that just you know if uh you know if i if they basically said here what are things we can improve upon i'd, I'd have a little list of just little things that um would help so um but yeah so then getting into the track um ticket scanning bag checks were fine you couldn't bring beer in so you couldn't bring any sealed containers of alcohol you could bring in water you could bring in soda you couldn't bring in anything that had alcohol in it if it was a sealed container so that one was a little not the biggest deal in the world i i generally don't get drink a ton at the racetrack mostly because i have to drive every time i leave a racetrack and i usually have to drive a long ways so um i don't generally drink that much anyway but that was a little because I, I do like to bring a couple things in from time to time but um you know ended up being just water and soda um for both races was all that they had allowed in on the cooler side but again at least they allowed coolers in so not that big a deal honestly um and then uh once you got into the track um, the best way to put it, so here, as we still got to set up the roads here, this is the racetrack. The midway was all along the grandstand, and then just out over here was the trailers. So all the haulers were lined up in a straight line over here. And then you came in uh, past a wall. It's actually the drag strip. You went past the drag strip wall, and once you got in the drag strip wall, this was the midway. And in the midway was just tents and concessions galore. They were all over the place. Um, that being said, they I think they had trouble getting enough people to work it um, because it, the lines did get a little bunched up which again it was a packed house so heck, it, it's it's hard to complain about it but i do know i did stand in line for roughly 40 minutes waiting for a uh, um for concessions luckily it was in between qualifying and the truck race so i didn't miss anything but i do know that that was something that i did notice took a lot longer than it probably should have um and i think there's some of that might just be people some of it might just be you know fine-tuning that organization some of that kind of stuff so small small things but the concessions were great the pricing was okay um i saw a post on twitter today that was about the the concession prices that was the infield fan zone where it was three dollar sodas three dollar water two dollar hot dog in the outside it was still you know eight dollar beers five dollars six dollar soda like it was not great so um, yes, the concessions were great. If you had the infield pass, I did not. I didn't know what it was. I didn't, uh, you know, really know much about it. If I went back, I would probably do the infield pass. It's about 130 bucks, and they give you the better concessions. You get the, the infield access. There's a bunch of stuff to do. There's a, a stage down there. So, um, you know, for 130 bucks for the weekend pass, it was definitely probably worth the money. Um, again, and you got the cheaper concessions. So I just didn't know it was my first time to the track and I, I kind of take things in slowly. I don't jump in and just get all the amenities right away. I kind of do a basic experience and then decide if I want to upgrade that experience. So, um, but yes, if you are going to gateway next year, 
highly recommend that infield pass. You'll get a you'll get your money's worth out of it. There's a lot to do on that infield. They do a good job making sure you didn't waste your money. So, um, but yeah. So then um, Saturday. As I said, waited a long time for that concession stand. Um, meanwhile, the nice thing was my sister was able to just wait under the grandstand. So she was able to sit in the shade or stand in the shade. There wasn't a lot of spots. I think she had a picnic table at one point, was able to find an opening. But, um, yeah, th- they had a nice area, very open under the grandstands so that there wasn't any vendors under there or anything like that, which allowed it to be just a place for people to sit back and kind of relax before the race started and stay out of the sun. Because if you know St. Louis in the summer, it's usually pretty hot. And we got lucky. It was only 80-some degrees this year. Uh, but there's a good chance that if they do it the same time next year, they could be sitting at 90s, 95s and very, very hot and not very fun weather. So uh, having that grandstand shade was nice. Uh, I would say if, you know, if there was one thing I, or if there's another little note, I'd say buy like double the picnic tables or triple the picnic tables. just put picnic tables and benches all over down there. Um, you know, I saw people sitting all over the ground, all over this, all of it. Like there were so many people under there and so few picnic tables and benches. It's like, well, clearly people like it under there. So just go ahead and fill it up with picnic tables and benches and you know, it'll get plenty of use. Um, so, yeah, I don't think that would be too big a deal. But um, midway-wise, I heard a lot of people saying the midway was really busy. There was a lot of people on the midway. And then there was that the the Kenny Wallace stage and some other stages like that. There was that kind of stuff on the midway. But I think I saw a busier midway in Bristol and, you know, 2018 pre-pandemic. This is probably the busiest post-pandemic midway. But, um, you know, I, I definitely have seen bigger midways. I think the biggest thing about this midway was it was sh- it was very small. You did not have near as much room, and that's kind of what caused a little bit of problems. So because the midway was just in this little alleyway, it was not very wide. So all the crowds kind of got funneled into one row. And the issues ran into was concession stand lines would go this way. And then one on this side would have a line going this way. And so you had lines going this way, this way, this way, this way, and people trying to walk this way. And it made kind of a mess. It was kind of clustered, a little tough to get through. Um, obviously it would be easy enough if they just fixed it. Just all they need to do is get those little ropes, the lines and poles and ropes so they can have a line that goes like this and wind. And that'll solve that problem really quickly. If they just have those, those ropes and, you know, poles, whatever, you know what they are, the, the line ropes, they put them in like amusement parks and stuff so that the line can kind of wind. But yeah, if they do that for their concession stand, that solves that entire problem. It's literally a simple fix. They'll be able to get that done. Um, as long as they see it's an issue because yeah, as I said, it looked good on the midway downside was it was a little harder to traverse down there cause it was so crowded. And as I said, with lines going this way back and forth, it made it so you had to kind of squeeze in and out of these lines constantly. And as I said, very small thing to fix. All you have to do is get those ropes. So the line winds around and it'll fix all those problems really simply. So not a big deal there, but just, you know, another note that I did notice, um, only the Toyota stage was there for manufacturers. I don't know if the, if they had trouble getting some of the bigger, you know, Chevy Ford and some of these other big stages in, cause they had a lot of smaller ones. They had the air force Geico, some of the smaller stands. Anheuser-Busch had a decent spot. Uh, monster energy had a, a trailer there and some stuff. So, um, there was still plenty to do. I mean, it was, again, it was a good midway, uh, for 2022. Um, but again, 2018, 2019 midways were still probably on par with this, if not a little better. This was just a more cl- uh, clustered midway. But um, as I said, the Kenny Wallace thing, having that at the stage there and different entertainment there throughout the weekend was was nice. Kenny Wallace brought some energy, which was fun. I said it was like it felt like race day. I remember being at race day uh, back in 2012. And there was energy in the air because of the race. And it really did feel like a 2012 NASCAR race, just like, you know, it it felt like the show is in town and everybody knows it. You know, college game day is that same feel like the the big game is here. This is where the big game is. This is where the event is. And, um, you know, if they can't do race day, just put the pre-race coverage on (laughs) out in the midway. Honestly, you know, I, I don't know who it is. I think it's Jamie McMurray and Adam Alexander. Some of these guys, they literally are in Charlotte in an empty booth doing pre-race coverage for some of this stuff. And then they're bouncing to and from the track. And it's like, just put them on the midway, bring them to the event. Let them, let them help build the atmosphere for this thing. Because that's what the number one thing I took away from gateway was the atmosphere was incredible. Now it was their first race. So I don't expect it to be the same atmosphere, the second or third or fourth time around, but there was definitely a buzz in the air that I cannot remember feeling at any point ever at a NASCAR race. This one had probably the most pre-race buzz. Um, and you know, it showed in terms of the, the amount of fans in the stands. So, um, but yeah, then, uh, we go through the rest of Saturday, the racing, 
Um, I didn't share any videos, but the racing was, was okay. I mean, it's not, you know, I've, I, after being to Bristol and Kansas, those are two of the better racing tracks in the series. You know, it's okay. It's solid. It was, it was watchable would be the best way to put it. It's a watchable race. Uh, wouldn't be on a bucket list or anything like that, but it, it was fine. It felt like Phoenix, honestly. It was just like, okay, it's equivalent to Phoenix. Not great racing, but it is still racing. So, um, so yeah, not great, but I will say the problem I had with especially my seat is I, I couldn't see the track real well. Um, they had a big sponsor tent down in turn one, a hospitality tent that had a, like an upper f floor to it. So it was two stories tall plus an awning. And basically when they went into turn one, I lost them till they came out of turn two. I missed all of turns one and two. So when Denny wrecked, I didn't even see it. Um, and then they would go down the backstretch, and I would see them for most of the backstretch. They'd disappear behind a video board or, or a camper here or there. Um, and then I'd see them all the way into turn three and four. Um, I could see them through three and four mostly. And then I would lose them behind another hospitality tent that was on the outside of the track. But, you know, it would still block my view from the grandstand. Um, and so I lost them coming out of turn four and, and most of the front part of the front stretch. And I wouldn't really get them back until they were in the restart zone. So that made it harder to watch because it was hard to watch a battle when the car kept disappearing and you had to try and find it where it would pop out. Um, so that was a little bit of a bummer is that the view wasn't very good. Um, I will say I did learn, uh, for all you people that want, you know, homestead to return and we want, you know, flat, long straightaways. I now understand why they will never go back to that way because, in a curved straightaway, every fan can see every inch of that straightaway no matter what. When it's a straight-on straightaway, fans can be in the way. Anything that's alongside of you can be in the way and block your view of the corner. So that's why all these tracks went to curved straightaways, because you can see the whole straightaway no matter where you sit. So I, I just learned that this weekend. This is the first track where I have had trouble seeing and some of it was, again, the sponsor tent, but some of it also was fan view. You'd look down to turn one and it's like, oh, now they're behind. There's there's some fans that are, you know, just the way the grandstand sits. But, um, again, small, small picking things. But that's just something I will say. I did have trouble watching both races that way. I, I still enjoyed it, but had trouble following the race because it was hard to watch that battle with, you know, the cars disappearing in and out of view. Um so yeah, that's uh, as far as the track, that's kind of the review. The track, basically, I would say the facility itself, A+, plus in terms of how clean and, and well-kept it was. Um, I would only give it like a, a C in terms of actual race track, which means how good were the seats, how good was the view, how good was the, um, you know, the infrastructure related to racing. So, um, you know, I have to give it a C or, or maybe even a C-, minus just because I couldn't see. You know, I wasn't able to see the whole racetrack very well. And I I was up fairly high. I mean, I was not at the very highest point or the very lowest point. I was definitely on the upper half, though, and still had trouble seeing. So, um, you know, again, the visibility would be the biggest factor there. Not being able to see uh, from that view. I also couldn't see the pit road entrance road that went into turn three. They would wrap around. It was it's basically gateway. The biggest problem I, I see there for their long term future is their infield is too high. Um, they eventually are going to have to dig that infield down if they want to keep the or keep improving that fan experience because with the infield so high up and not dug down far enough, you know, there were times a, a regular camper could be parked in, you know, one of the infield spots and block the track view because it's just it's not dug down far enough. You know, you're supposed to be down in the infield and they weren't they you know the infield's not very low. So, um, you know, it's again, it's I, I think the promoters have done absolutely everything they could they did a fantastic job but i think the racetrack itself does need a little help to get to a higher standard um which is again i've been to iowa kansas uh chicagoland bristol pocono pocono was so long ago i, I can't really speak on that because i haven't been there in such a long time and uh, obviously the indy road course and Obviously, I couldn't see everything at the Indy Road Course, uh, but they had a lot of TV screens, which kind of helped. But um, this was probably the second worst view track in terms of being able to see the race developing. And it wasn't that big a track. You know, Kansas, Chicago are both bigger, but their infields are dug really low. And so that allows the track to be really elevated and allow, you know, you can see all of Kansas and all of Chicago from the grandstand very easily. So, um, but yeah, again, it's just, it's nitpicking, but I just like to be able to, you know, make sure people know what they're getting into. Um, so yeah, the facility wise, I would say that the track promoting was terrific. I mean, there was a buzz in the whole city 
a lot of local people came out. A lot of people I talked to at the racetrack, they were from St. Louis, St. Louis area. This is the only track they've ever been to. They don't venture out very far. They don't travel for racing, which I thought that is speaks testament to the promoting of the racetrack. You know, Bristol people come from all over the country to see that race. Cause it's become a destination racetrack. Um, that track, everyone was local or not everyone, but a lot of people came from the local area to see that race because, they did a great job promoting it as it's St. Louis's race. And, you know, a lot of people from St. Louis are there, um, whether it was sponsors that gave away tickets or, or something like that. A lot of worldwide technology people were there, um, especially in the section I was sitting in. A lot of people, I could hear them talking about every single person doing something in pre-race. You know, oh, we know him. He's a, you know, he works in that department, works in, you know, so a lot of, you know, worldwide technology invested in this race and this racetrack, which I think was fantastic having, um, you know, a partner that really cares about it. So, um, but anyway, so then we get on to the racing. Uh, the race was, it was okay. It wasn't great racing. I mean, I, I got to see the Kansas race. That was terrific. So it's hard to compare, but you know, it was okay. Racing It was really hard to pass. Um, you know, but at least I got good grief. We had tempers, we had entertainment going all race. I mean, for crying out loud, I don't even remember. There was a section where some guys was, were kind of scooting away from the field. I'm sitting there watching Denny Hamlin, Ross Chastain and Chase Elliott all, you know, getting in a pissing match over around the racetrack. And so there was never a shortage of things to watch. It never really got dull. There was always something to watch, even if they got all strung out. At some point, Hamlin was going to get relapped by Chastain and, and the antics would continue. So um, it was a, it was fun. It was a fun race. Um, Fox, I would love it if they could move the damn start time up. My gosh, I got home at two 30 in the morning. Uh, I didn't get out of there until about six 30, uh, from the racetrack and the race didn't even get over till probably five 45, six o'clock, something like that. And so, I mean, that's the part that's frustrating is, you know, why are we getting out of racetracks at six 45 or six o'clock? Like we, we got to give these guys, a, you know, a lot of race fans don't live right next to the racetrack. You got to give them a chance to get home, you know? If you're going to go late night race, do it on Saturday so they have all of Sunday to travel. You can't, you know, you can't expect people to just take that extra Monday off work every time. You know, it worked this time. It's the inaugural event. But um, you either got to go Saturday night or Sunday earlier because, you know, fans at the track need to be able to get home at a decent hour. And I mean, I'm, I'm get it. I'm six hours away. That's a long way to ask to go. But I've done it in the past. I've done it from Chicago many or twice. And I've done it from Kansas many times. So. I'm no stranger to driving back after a race and this was by far the latest. So, um, yeah, that's a little, uh, that's the only frustrating part from that. But, um, anyway, so let me, let's go into some questions and then I'll, if I, there's questions related to the track, I'll answer them here. Uh, let's see here. So, um, we'll start here. here. Jeff, did I see the comments about the silver rims for the Penske cars? Uh, yes, I did. So I did see actually at the racetrack, I noticed Penske is running silver rims. The reason these look so bad is that the gap in between the spokes is also silver and it shouldn't be. So honestly, if they were able to find a way to either poke those gaps out and have them be actual rims, that would really help or just find a way to only coat the spokes, which would probably cost a lot. So yeah, the silver, this color silver just looks wrong, but, um, if they were able to eventually, you know, get it so it's just the, the spokes like on the 124th i think it would be fine uh we have two stories at my school um and the in the band hall is on the upstairs and i have to carry two instruments Ooh, that doesn't sound fun um let's see here oh uh, let's see i want to drive for Stuart haas at game which okay so you gotta have a nice conversation how was gateway okay we went through that uh let's go through here how was gateway again okay so how far am I, how far off am i i gotta look and see here uh, oh, sorry. 708. Oh, good Lord. I'm, I'm 20 minutes behind. Okay, here we go. Uh, 17 going to Arca. Okay, hello. Uh, I have that same Elliot 124 Baja Blast just past 100. Uh, Elliot 124. Do you have the liquid? Because the liquid is the... This is a grail. There's only 24 or 48 of these. There are not many of them, but it looks absolutely gorgeous. And now it has a very nice signature on it. So I'm very happy to... Uh, have that one cemented like that. I think it looks good. Um, let's see here. Bowman going to race in trucks this week? Yes, I saw that. Bowman will be racing. Kyle Busch will be racing. Harrison Burton will be racing. Ross Chastain will be racing. And I'm guessing someone's going to have to fill in for Carson Hosovar. Um, you know, I, I don't like to speculate, but 
no news this far in is not good news. So I don't think he's going to be racing this weekend, and it could be a lot longer than that because he took quite a hit. So I, I'm hoping the best, obviously, but I, I don't have a lot of as much optimism. Uh, so I do think we'll have somebody else in that car. Let's see here. Um, Want to get a Mountain Dew, but I ran out. Thank goodness I had a few left from the racetrack. They actually freeze on top, too. All right. You guys are having conversations in this air. I don't need to answer those. <laughs> Friends with Cody Ware. What? Who are you asking? I don't know Cody Ware. Um, AJ Game, Joe Graff Jr. and Cody Ware, Jimmy Johnson, and Jeff Gordon. Uh, I'm not, I think you guys are responding to each other again. Um, why so aggressive? Um, let's see here. Oh, here we go. I got a super chat. I didn't even see that. Uh, thank you for the great content again. Uh, and thank you for that Jeff Tal Talladega car. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, I did see you posted that on Twitter. So uh, he bought the Je uh, 2000 Jeff Gordon Talladega win. Um, I was clearing out my Jeff Gordon case. I now have five open slots. One, two, three, four, five. So now my Jeff Gordon case is full. Not sure if I'm done cleaning it out. I think I'll have some more that will go out eventually. And we'll move some other stuff around. But... Just uh, needing to make some room down here, so I'm glad you like it. I'm really glad. Race Craze, why did you not find Cody Ware Ford? I hate line Oh, uh, yeah. I, honestly, I would love to get a Cody Ware car. That 51 looks beautiful. That is a really good-looking purple, so um, i I really like to see that. Do I like the next-gen diecast? So um, the 164s, I don't mind this one. So this one, you can see it's got the black rims, and it looks a lot better. Um it doesn't feel too bad or too different from the Gen 6 in terms of it doesn't feel cheaper or, or worsely made. Like it feels on par. It doesn't feel that bad. I think the wheels feel a little different, but I will say these do roll really well. So just having it like on that desk at the hotel and kind of rolling it back and forth, like it rolls really well. So these are probably going to do really well with, you know, people like kids who like hot wheels and racing them down the slides. Like I used to do and all that stuff <laughs> still do. No, I don't have a slide if I did. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, so the, it does roll good. So, you know, when you're talking about being able to run the car around a racetrack that you make or down the slide or whatever, but it's going to roll good. So that's something I will say I noticed. Like, it doesn't have that where the wheel will kind of bind up or bounce or it won't roll real straight. Like, they are a really smooth rolling uh, 164th. Um, in terms of looks, I still hate the number placement. I always will. I just, it looks terrible. And uh, I don't know. The rest of the body's fine. Like, I would say it's on par with the Gen 6 um, late, later on. I think the spoiler is a little too tall. I think they'll correct that. You know, this is only their first mold. But, um, you know, if they are two small things to improve on, it's the wheels and the spoiler. And, you know, that it's it's serviceable. I don't I don't want to say it's great, but it's it's fine. Um, I wish they would get do the next gen rims with five lugs. Hundred uh, percent. I've been saying that for a while. The Here's the thing. Kevin Harvick took a wicked lick because of a tire that went down. Um, Ryan Blaney also took a wild ride and both of those guys with inner liners, I think would have saved those cars because they almost had gathered them up, but because it lost the rest of its air and then went straight down on the rim, they just can't catch these cars anymore. And Harvick got full blown destroyed because of it. Blaney was able to come back, but I mean, my, I don't even care about the lug or five lug thing. I want inner liners. Please put inner liners in these tires. So these guys aren't losing race cars because of a random flat tire. Um, because the random flat tire is getting really annoying. Um, you know, gosh, we were so close to green flag pit stops in this last weekend's race. And I really wanted to see what it was because I think the tire fall off being so little clean air would have been a strategy call to stay out long in the clean air or come in early to try and get clean air. Um, that could have been really fun to watch, uh, but we just never could get there. And stage cautions are a big part of that as well. That caused that problem. But, um, you know, it, it, it I don't think it's terrible. I just think there's there's issues that got to be fixed. Um, I have the color chrome DIN 96 of 96. Oh, only 96. So, yeah, the chrome, I did see the chrome. If the chrome was from 2015 or earlier, I would say that's an absolute must-have. I don't think the color chrome had has as high a quality after 2017 because for some reason the chrome got, like, not as crystal clear. And I can I can actually show this at some point when I get a chance. I'll show a chrome next to a uh, older color chrome, and you'll be able to see the difference. But um, definitely, don't get me wrong, color chrome still looks really good. I just think liquid was definitely my favorite. Um, wish you could afford a 124. Don't worry. 
They'll someday they'll come down. They always do. I got my first 124 for twenty dollars, and then eventually they're more. So, uh, why am I why am I selling next gens? Um, just because I'm gonna eventually get them in um, on the dealer level. So I don't really need to have these once I've done the review. Like I don't really have a purpose. You know, when I get them on the website, I put them, I post them to the website. But I'm not the guy that posts these on the website for you know thirty dollars or some. Number. I'd put them on the eBay page, put them at a, I started them all at five or six bucks and whatever happens from there happens and I'm not really responsible for it. So, um, you know, if people bid it up, that's, that's what they want to do. That's fine. But, um, that way I could, you know, basically buy all these at the track, get move off them after I made my videos and took my pictures and, um, you know, make more videos and stuff on other. So, um, you know, they, these were $12 a piece at the racetrack. Um, and I have... I think I picked up eight of them overall. So I ended up spending well over a hundred dollars on these 164s um, over the weekend, which it looks like they'll all sell for fairly decent. So I, I won't lose anything on it, which is nice. And I was able to get the videos out in a good manner. But like I said, I, I will get these in again later, but I'll get them in when they're, you know, uh, you know, eight ninety nine a piece, I think is what they run eight or nine. I can't remember, but obviously they're going to be a lot less than 12 that they charge at the racetrack. So, where are the Kyle Busch next gens? No Toyotas. No Toyotas. Uh, Chevy only had one in 124th, and Ford has some 164s. So someday they'll be out here. Maybe at Sonoma. Who knows? Uh, next gen car showed have five lugs because because um, uh, if I want them to be stock street stock, I have to have five lugs. No, for sure. Actually, I thought it would be really cool if NASCAR made the next gen car so stock car like that someone could legitimately buy it and put a kit on it and make it a street legal car. I think that would be so cool if they could convert next gen cars into street cars, you know, with modification. But that would be super cool to know that these cars can do both um i think that just opens the door to truly understanding stock cars again which would be very cool um let's cancel all the chevys make them toyotas no thank you unless you're talking in real life because i have owned two toyotas that have been fantastic every gm slash ford i've ever owned has been a pile of garbage so don't ask me why but the american companies aren't doing so hot in terms of reliability if they go back to the five lug pattern they got to go back to steel rims that's fine i mean until they can do an interliner in the other rim you need to you know the interliner is for safety like put that interliner back in the car and wait Till you can do inner inner yeah sorry, wait until you can do interliners before you reintroduce this rim. That's all it is, you know. At the end of the day, it's just it go back, but you know, figure out a solution to the problem instead of just running on them. Uh, let's see here, Eric Almarola fan. I only have one 124 Elite and one 124 ARC. Uh, don't worry, you'll be able to get some more of them. The only problem is, you know, getting these. Uh, I have to get those right away because I, you know, a lot of these cars are more expensive than when they first came out. A couple are custom, but uh, very glad that I, you know, haven't had to track down that Chase Elliott, that one right there, that Chase Elliott Kansas win. Uh, buying it when they were eighty-seven dollars is way better than buying them now when they're three fifty. All right. Uh, love to see the Wood Brothers twenty-one go back to the gold leaf numbers. What do you mean? That one right there. Because they got gold leaf numbers on there. There you can kind of see it. But yes, the numbers are leaf gold. So they do have a very shiny number. Now it's harder to see on the 164, but you will see it on the 124 for sure. And it is on the 164 as well. Uh, just want the Briscoe and Burton car. But uh, yeah, they're, like I said, people are bidding them crazy numbers. But as I said, they, they just came into the trailers. So that means we're usually a week or two behind when the dealers get them. So... In a week or two, I'll have uh, you know, I'll have these for the good price of ten dollars a piece. I think it's ten. It might be nine, uh, but whatever the number is, um, you know, I'll have them for that number instead of thirty, forty a piece, which will be a lot better. Uh, let's see. I have one big problem with the next gen one sixty four. I have the Coca Cola promo car, and the bottom of the car is coming off the black underbelly. Uh, Oh, it's falling off. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't have anything that showed any type of sign of that. Now, I don't know if that's a promo car thing, though, either. If they had something where the promo car wasn't, you know, ready yet or something like that. So I'm not sure yet. Um, but I haven't seen any issues as far as them peeling off like that. Uh, let's see. Can I sell the Harrison Burton? I, I have it on eBay currently. This one is literally listed. So um, whoever bids it gets it. I, I can't uh, change it there. So, um Twelve dollars six thirty six. 
Not sure what you're referencing there, unless it's 63. Uh, but anyway, let's see here. Next week, I'll be at the Lionel Shop in Concord, North Carolina. They usually have some pretty good deals. Hopefully, they'll have some next gens in. Um, as I said, they, they overnight the stuff to the trailers, so that's why they were fresh this weekend. Uh, that's why I was glad to be able to make the video, get kind of one of the first ones, but... Um, don't have any 124. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Do you know which will be the first next gen elite to release? I don't, I would assume though that it'll be one of the Hendrick test cars because that's just what they had for the ARC. And usually it's about the same. Um, why does my die cast cost eight, 1,804 bucks? I'm not sure what that means. Um, I don't know which one you're talking about. <laughs> I promise you, I didn't put any of them at eighteen hundred and four dollars. <laughs> All right, pulling the ARC off quick here. Oh, there we go. Flip that over. So we'll take a look at the the ARC and then take a look at the box here quick. There we go. Put the screws up here. Uh, gotta get them put inside. There we go. Okay, now I'm getting the 160 or the 124 ARC. So the bad news is I did find out this is the Elite box as well. The boxes are going to be the same, which is kind of a bummer because it's a really poorly designed box. Uh, but here we go. That's our box for this year. And uh, that's our car. So I don't like the number placement, all that junk, whatever. But the biggest thing, as you can see, that box is going to be a problem for stacking. So not really uh not really a fan of that oh converted your currency okay <laughs> that would make more sense why that was it does the arc not have the removable bottom it does not only the elite will have the bottom that is removable um so the bottom just looks like this i mean looks very very cheap um now that being said i haven't taken it apart yet that's something i'm going to actually do tonight uh, we're going to dissect it and see what it looks like on the inside um so yeah we're going to do that uh, the PTC as show cars. Is that the mold? The PTC mold? Uh, just picked up 2022 Wave 1, uh, 164 Elliot Cota win, AJ's Indy Road Course win. Now I just wanted to get AJ's 124 Elite. Uh, I will have the dual autographed Elite coming in. I can't wait. That that was such a good race at Indy, and I'm glad I have that one, so I can't wait. Um, converted it, and it's... Okay, It's it shouldn't be 1804, so that's... Uh, that, that would definitely be bad. Yes, the boxes are horrible. Okay, now I'm all caught up. So, uh, yeah, the box, definitely going to be a stacking problem. I have a big problem. I think these boxes are going to get tore up here and here. These edges are going to get all folded in on each other and crumbled. I think these boxes are really going to age poorly. I, I really hope they put a sleeve or something over so they'll stack a little bit better. Um, because not being able to stack these cars just seems like a bad idea. They didn't even stack them in the trailer. They had them sitting like this in the trailer because they were going to, if they put them on top of each other, it'll literally collapse or potentially bend or break part of the box. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not all keen on this box. Um, I don't think it was really necessary <laughs> to make that change. Uh, you had a decent box before that had kind of worked for consistently for five, six, seven years. So, I mean, I guess if you want to make a change, fine, but this this is literally not stackable unless you were to put something that come up and over. But, yeah, didn't didn't make sense to me. I, I don't think that was a very good move, so I guess we'll find out, but I'm not as excited for it. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's go ahead and actually get a close look at it while we're at it. I may as well. I mean, we're doing here. Oh, I don't know why I said that, but anyway, here we go. Man, that Mountain Dew is... Uh, Pretty good. There we go. Right about there. So we're going to slide this down, get a nice close look at it. So anyone that wants to see something, let me know what you're looking for. I'll try to get it nice and close. But here's that rim. If you're looking at that, what those rims look like. The, now remember, my review of this is going to have a clearer picture. I review, I uh, My review videos are in 4K. This is not. So, uh, but yeah, that is the... Um, this is the uh, the rim here. It doesn't look too bad. There's no brake calipers. I did see the rotor, but there is no calipers. So that's something I thought was a little weird. Uh, also, we have the raised splitter. So we do have the different front end there. Um, the hood vents are up there. They're just decals. I really wish that they were actually molded so you would actually feel the difference. Like you roll over and you could feel the hood having that. I think they didn't do that for the sake of sponsors. I think they were going to have so many issues with decals you know, going through here. Uh, perfect example is the hood is up here. You can see how often on the roof 
the uh, the decal gets a little clustered up in those hinges and stuff. And I just imagine the decals would look really bad on the hood if they were trying to put a decal on with a bunch of ridges and then that ridge has an issue. So I sort of understand it. I don't it doesn't mean I agree with it, but I understand why they went with a decal instead of the actual hood vent because I think you would have had far more issues with um, you know, with the with the decals all clustered up and, and not looking right. Um, but overall, I mean, the, the exhaust and, and the, the side panels, the diffuser, that kind of stuff, it all looks okay. Um, it's not a bad looking race car, but obviously these were really expensive at the racetrack. So, um, not a good deal to buy at the racetrack. That is for sure. But, um, definitely, um, definitely not worth buying for a hundred dollars regularly. I just got, did it so I can make my video. So, all right. Uh, when did they release the new cars? These were only at Gateway. McKeeboy says, I'm going to pre-order Logano's race win from Worldwide Technology last weekend. Well, lucky for you, I believe they are all up on rasdiecast.com. Promo code RACECRAZE will get you, I believe it's 10%. Make sure it is, because I could be wrong. But it will get you uh, the cheapest pre-order price available. That I can promise. Uh, i got to check the shipping. Uh, I think it's been an issue for me lately, so i got to see if that's still wonking up in there. But, uh, yes, use anytime you're on the website, use promo code RSDiecast. It saves you on any order, so make sure you use it because I've had a few going through that, that didn't use it, and it might just be because they don't watch the YouTube channel. But highly recommend use that promo code. Um, can we see the underside of, or the underwing could be removed? Uh, I thought it was because of the size of change protector i'm not sure what we talking about there uh anyway here we go so that's the underside just that's the diffuser it's literally just plastic and this is all just plastic right here really but as i said i'm gonna i'm gonna go digging into it tonight and actually we're gonna do it on stream here take it apart kind of see what it's like um they were at gateway oh yep you got it there uh heard lion alga i say they didn't do that because of the vents being different on the cars and tracks um maybe they could have i mean sure if that's their reasoning that's fine but i still think it's a smart move because it's a lot easier to apply a decal to a smooth surface than a bunch of ridges because i mean you you see what that vent looks like that vent would have caused major issues with decals going across it i mean these things would have looked terrible so i don't blame them for skipping the decal just based on looks because it, it would be tough i can definitely tell it would not work very well uh let's see here the thing interesting to say, at least, uh, wonder. Uh, oh, it's interesting at least. Wonder how they'll look going forward, with, and what changes they'll make. Hopefully, they'll just kind of slowly make improvements to it and make the quality look better. And and maybe eventually the diffuser goes away and they start adding different parts back underneath and stuff like that. That'd be great. But um, they haven't exactly been known for adding detail in the last ten years, so. Uh, hope they continue to make the track event cars. They didn't have one the, this last weekend. Yeah, they don't. They don't make as many of those um, as they used to. That now I think I still think they'll make plenty of them. Um, but that's why I went to the event pin. I just think these pins are far more reliable. I've only had two races ever that I couldn't get a pin for, and that was either a COVID race or a race where the sponsor jumped on so late that they had they, they didn't have time to make anything, which includes T-shirts or cars or anything. They had no race merchandise because the sponsor came on so late. So you know, it wasn't really um, it wasn't really an issue of you know them not making the car versus the pin. It was just they didn't make anything because the sponsor came on so late or yeah, like I said, COVID. So uh, let's see here. It says new channel in the description, but the link is private. Yeah, that might be my old channel. I I got to see if that's still in there or not, but um, I think it's on my Facebook page. I don't know if I posted it yet, um, the the Joey Logano race win link yet, but I will be posting it. Um, wonder why Worldwide, Te Worldwide Technology didn't have track diecast. Uh, like I said, the, ne the next gen car literally just came out, so I'm guessing they didn't push too hard to try and get a diecast in this year. Uh, considering how hard it was to even get these into the racetrack, and they probably didn't want to overnight a whole bunch of them to the uh, to the racetrack like Charlotte did. So I don't blame them. I don't. I don't. I think it was a smart move financially, probably to skip this year and then bring back bring it back next year because. Um, I said next gens are kind of in a high demand, so you I think Charlotte paid a pretty penny to get those done on time. 
Um, let's see. I got the second phases of braces off yesterday. Oh, those are fantastic when you can get those off. I hated braces. Not that they were super uncomfortable. They were just annoying. That's all they were was just annoying at all moments. Um, I need a bigger screwdriver. I, by the way, while you guys are here, I am now taking the screws out of the next gen car and we are going to do some investigating. So we're going to see what, uh, what's inside these things and what makes, what detail is there to the next gen car. All right. There's, I think a grand total of six screws, just like there were before their mounts are in different places. That's for sure. That's something different. Yeah, I think I got that one off. Yep. Boy, that feels really cheap. I'm, I just lifted the li the first screw out, and boy, that felt really cheap. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little concerned. The future of the ARC may hang in the balance. All right, let's see here. I got another chat here. Uh, hopefully, they will make the next year. I think they will. I think they'll make them again next year, so uh, I wouldn't worry too much about it there. Uh, McKee boys, I, I think they'll be... They'll be there next year because I don't think the die-cast industry will be in quite as big a uh, pickle as they are now with all these new cars that they want to release and get to the track and and the fact that they're kind of stuck waiting right now. And, you know, it's June. They don't have any 22, 22 race cars out until this weekend, and it's June. Like, they don't want, they want to have these things at the track in Daytona if possible. So that's why it's so important for some of these teams to get their announcements in early, but it's also important for Lionel to speed up that process so they can get these cars at the racetrack a little sooner. Oh, wow. I just got the whole car out. So that's kind of easy. All right. Let me... Three. Okay, I got three screws out. One, two, three. The other ones are all stuck, so I'll leave them where they're at. So here is the chassis of the next-gen car. Um... Interesting. We'll go through that. Take a look at what we got there. So here's what the inside of the next gen car looks like from just like a base level. Um, wow, we got to do something about that engine, man. I, I mean, this this feels really cheap. I'm not gonna lie. I don't. I don't. Oh man, that feels cheap. Now, here's what I will say. Before I go too far, there are improvements. You can paint these little lines and things up here. You can add color to those. That makes it look better. You can add color to the seat, to the steering wheel. You can add an orange dot up there. You can add silver to the shifter. A little bit of paint can actually go quite a ways to making the car look a lot better. So it is possible. You can add little lines onto the fire extinguishers down there. Um, you can add logos to the seat if you have a really good printer. Otherwise, maybe don't worry about that. Uh, you could add some stuff on here to the dash. So there are there is room that you could add some stuff to make it look better. Um, at least in terms of here in the cab area, but man, that engine is so, so disappointing. There's like nothing to it, man. I hope the elite's better than this. I really do. That's going to be so frustrating. If the elite looks like that, it has to be better than that. If this is the elite engine detail, I am not going to be happy at all. Um, but it is supposed to have functioning suspension still. So hopefully... You know, there's some room on that left and rear. Because it'd be really cool if it had the suspension components, like control arms and tie rods and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, that's our that's our chassis. It's it's certainly something different. I'm not going to not going to pretend it's not. That is definitely a, a unique, um, a unique inside chassis there. Um, not sure what my thoughts are on it, honestly. There, there's definitely room for improvement, but boy, it is it, it has a lot of I mean, wow, look at that. Doesn't that look just cheap? Look at that. It's just a regular axle. That's all that's in there. I think I could... Could I pop this off? Can I pull this whole roll cage out? I think the roll cage would come right out. It, it wouldn't take much. But it looks like that roll cage could almost come out. Look at how much it bends. Look at how much flex there is in that. So, little feels a little cheap. I will say it still looks good, so I'm not going to go too far. But it does look good, but man, looks a little cheap. Let's see what you guys have to say about it. Um... What are the raised rectangles on the bottom of the car? Those are what they call stop blocks. These uh, these little blocks down here, these here were called. These are what this like those little rectangles are what are causing cars to get stuck on the racetrack with flat tires. They're literally ride height preventers. Like they keep the car from being too low, and they have them on the track. And that's basically why when people have flat tires, they get beached. It's because they're riding on those. And so, uh, yeah, that, it's accurate. It's just wrong. <laughs> um, Thomas Fan says, uh, hi, Race Craze, welcome in. Uh, are the dashes 
digital or no? Yes, they are. They are, but they're just a black screen, or they're just black. There's no, there's no decal or any detail to it. So maybe somebody out there can can make a digital dash sticker. You can buy a, you know, a lot of twenty of them or something, just on a little sticker sheet, and then you can actually take them apart, stick that in there, stick something in here. You know, you could actually stick these tiny little decals into these cars and make them look good. So, um, oh, that's something I didn't do yet. Let me grab. I'm gonna grab that Chase Elliott model car and see what that chassis looks like up next to the next gen Camaro. So there's the one from the from that model I'm gonna build, and there's the Kyle Larson car. Oh, this will be interesting. Okay, so the Chase Elliott is actually a little bit shorter, but that's also because it's not sitting on wheels. Um, did they use the same mold? It doesn't look like it. Looks a little different. Yeah, it is. It's definitely a little different. Very interesting. Very interesting. The the uh, the location of the TV uh, camera up there is different. Um, I think the detail is actually better on this one uh, in terms of what's here on the side with the exhaust port. Um, the front end detail is probably pretty similar. Um, and yeah, it's probably fairly similar the rest of the way around. So that's interesting. I hadn't actually had a chance to really compare that model next to a, a real ARC, but I think the body detail is going to be better on the model. It's obviously a plastic body versus a, you know, a metal die cast body. So let's see. Uh, what did they do? Um, I have now tore it apart. This is good, though. This is how you get to know what, what's inside your car and how to fix problems if you run across them. So let's see here. Um, Daytona 500 is the first time I first time had no promo car. Wow, that must have been this year then because they probably didn't have the Gen 6s out. Yes, it, okay, so I see your question there. Uh, what is it, Brian Osborne? Um, yes, you can make the trunk open. You do need to get some hinges, but you take those four screws out, if you can see them. One, two, three, four. Take those four screws out, and the deck lid will pop right off. You need to get some hinges so that the hinges can attach and open the deck lid. But yes, you can open the deck lid. Now, that doesn't do you a ton of good because there's nothing in there. So you would have to add detail or just throwing it out there. You could use it like a piggy bank, and you could put stuff in it. So just throwing it out there. You could literally use your your ARCs as a piggy bank. So kind of a weird idea, but, I mean, the option is there. So, um, but, yeah, that's that's not – I don't know. It's definitely cheaper than the, the, the previous ARC. I do think there's a lot more customization available to this one. Boy, it is flimsy, though. Look at how much flex there is in this. You can flex these things a lot. Um, it does look like you can pull that cab off, though. So here's the other thing. You can pull this clear off the car, I think. Could be wrong. But I think this whole thing, you could actually pull the whole thing off. And that would allow you to do a lot of touch-up detail inside this car and whatnot. Um, you know, again, trying to make it look better from the outside. So there are some things it looks like that could be done to help with that outside. Um, can you pull rims off? Looks like you can still pull the rims off if you wanted to. I don't know about up front, though. Up front could be tough. Oh gosh, that's interesting. Wonder if that would how that would work. Wonder if that pops down. I, I have to do more dissecting when I don't have it. You know, one that I get for the first time on the elite side, so I can take a look at it. But definitely, uh, I don't know. Definitely not as bad as I thought when I first looked at it. But man, up here, I I want to make some some changes up here to make that look better. It just doesn't look quite good enough. But yeah, I mean the nice thing is. It literally just sets right back on top. Well, I say that, and then it won't. Let's see here. All right, come on, you. All right, now I'm having trouble. I think I did it upside down the first time, which probably is what helped it. Okay. Yep, that's what it is. So a little little tricky to get back on, and that's just because of the way that the the body actually lines up, um, or the chassis lines up, because it actually there we go. I just snapped it back down. But basically, the way that the body lines up, there it actually like inserts um, part way up, like on the little pole with a little post, and by it doing that, it basically causes the car to not go flush until you have all of them lined up so i did get them all lined up now i'm putting the screw back in and it'll be all good to go 
Um, all right, let's see here. What is my current favorite driver? Mine is Ryan Blaney. Uh, my current is Chase Elliott, Noah Gregson. I think that's also Chase Elliott, 501st, number nine. I think his favorites are Chase Elliott, Noah Gregson. Uh, Larson or Ross. Oh, I can't, can't stand Ross right now. Honestly, it was still entertaining to watch, but, man, he took out a lot of guys on Sunday. And he took out Chase, and Chase was finally recovering from that earlier issue on pit road. And then he ends up in the back. Or not even in the back. He ends up up front, and Ross just dumps him and sends him right back to the back. And did damage to the car, and it was never as good after that. And it was Ross Chastain's fault, so Ross Chastain has to take the blame. But, um, no, I still like Ross. I, I'm still still a, a Ross believer. I think he's a good good driver. Made some mistakes. Uh, let's see. Who else you got? We got, um, but all the time, Jimmy Johnson. Okay, yeah. I can see that. But my all-time is Casey Kane. And then after that, it's Chase Elliott. Uh, Noah Gregson, Brett Moffitt, and Carson Hosevar has entered that that realm as well. I really enjoy watching him race. He's a really good, really good truck racer, and I think he got so robbed at Charlotte. But man, he's gonna he's gonna get wins. I I really hope he doesn't miss too much of the season and has a chance to make that that truck series playoff yet. Um, you know that would be really unfortunate if he wasn't able to make it back on um, on the racetrack. Let's see here. Chase and Noah. Good good picks, guys. You're just doing good. Uh my fir- my, my oh that's that that is my favorite. So yes, I I agree with you. It's Chase and Noah. Uh obviously I'm a huge Brett Moffat fan. So if I had to choose, like say they're coming down to the line, Brett Moffat, Noah Gregson, I'm taking Brett Moffat every day. I want Brett Moffat to win races over Noah Gregson. But I still re- you know watch for Noah Gregson. I want him to perform well as well. So I'm watching both of them. Um, but uh, if it came right down to it, who wins in a drag race to the finish line, I'm picking Brett Moffitt. Um, but uh, yeah, again, I watch them both, uh, in the cup series, it's Chase Elliott. And then in the truck series right now, it's Carson Hosevar. I watched Raja, Raja, Raja. I don't know how to say his name. It's, it's kind of confusing, but, uh, the Carruth kid, I know that much. He is fast. I watched him at Bristol last year. He can hang on to a really loose race car. He looked great in the truck race. He looks awesome. I can't wait to see him get some more opportunities in that Spire truck. He was fast on Saturday. <clears throat> RCR said that he put Dale Sr.'s death car in water. I actually heard they buried it, but I could be wrong. All current for me, Chase, Blaney, Byron, Reddick, Gregson, and Zane Smith. Oh, Zane Smith is a good, fun one too, but he's not on my favorites list. Um, man, you got four cup drivers in there. How does that work? What happens when Chase Blaney are running for the lead with Byron or Reddick? Like, who you got to pick somebody, right? <laughs> you got to pick. You got to pick one. One who wins the drag race. Who wins the drag race? If you had to choose, top three favorites in NASCAR are Elliott, Gregson, and Creed. Um, I, I don't mind Sheldon Creed, um, but again, he was racing with Brett Moffat, so I had to root against him because Moffat was his teammate, and uh, you know. They're not they're not teammates anymore, but you know if I, I only have room for two in the Xfinity series and it's Moffat and Gregson, um, but <clears throat> sorry I had to get another sip. There we go. But um, yeah, overall, um, those are those are my favorites. I was able to get a nice autograph I think from all of them. Yeah, I've had all every one of them signed a car I've I've seen. Actually, I've had all of them sign a car I've seen them win in, too. Um, I got to watch Brett win at uh, Iowa and Chicago and Bristol, and I have all three of those cars autographed. I have Chase's Kansas win autographed and Noah's Kansas win truck series. Uh, I have a custom of that truck that's autographed. So, <laughs> Thoughts on Ty Gibbs being wrecked under caution at Portland? My thoughts on it were just, what in the heck was that? Like, that was dumb. I mean, it couldn't have happened to a better guy. So I'm not. It was one of those like, even when it happened, it's laughable. But um, you know, Ty Gibbs had such a good car. I don't know what happened later in the race. Looks like he just took himself out racing with um, racing with Creed after he took Noah out. Like you know, Noah kind of you know crowded him a little bit, made it a little tough. But you know, he didn't knock into him or run into him real hard or anything like that. And Noah gets to the lead, and two corners later, Ty Gibbs just runs in there and absolutely dumps him. So. Um, later in the year, that's going to come back to bite him. I mean, that is just stupid. That is not a good way to race. Why are you dumping someone with half the race left for no reason? Like you're going to pay for that and you're not going to like it. Like, what are you doing? It's the same thing with Ross and Denny. Like I like Ross, but 
he drove in there so hard and just flat out wrecked Denny. It's like, why'd you do that? Like, he's not just going to make sure you don't win this race. He's going to make sure you don't win about five races that you have a shot to win. He's going to make your life a lot harder anytime you're around him. And it's just not worth it. That's the thing. Like, I appreciate hard racing um, to a point. But when you start taking out your competitors in situations that just don't call for that harder racing at that moment, that's where it's just – that's dumb. You know, Joey, when he knocked Byron out of the way, it was at least for the win. I don't like it. I still thought it was a dumb move because it's going to bite him a bit later, hopefully. But, um, you know, he did that to a guy in fifth and a guy in eighth. Like, why are you wrecking people for those positions? You didn't end up with the race win, and now you have to deal with both of them for the rest of the year, and they're not happy about it. So, yeah. I don't like any of the, of the truck guys. They don't drive like they don't drive like me in a NASCAR video game. Uh, oh, they do drive like you in a NASCAR video game. That's probably accurate. Um, like I said, I thought Hosevar has been one of the better drivers. He's aggressive, but, man, he he is a f- decently fair racer. He doesn't totally destroy people, so um don't tell anyone uh jesse doesn't belong in a race car uh he certainly doesn't belong in any of the nascar series he needs to absolutely get some experience first and that's not any like everyone wants to say like you're just being personal but that man i can't you you don't belong out there you can see it you can visually see the guy who clearly doesn't belong on that racetrack and that needs to change before more cars get wrecked i mean you just can't have that um aj gaming uh oh i see here we go no gregson being my favorite extended driver is one of my favorite drivers currently very hard not to root for ty gibbs oh i can easily root for ty against ty gibbs uh i didn't mind him early in his career when i saw how he chose to race nemechek that's where i was like nah i'm not a fan of that um you know ryan sieg early in the year that was kind of stupid i was like man what are you doing like why are you wrecking a guy for that position that early in the race that's just not needed and then um like i said when he came down to the wire and nemechek ran him clean and passed him clean and he one bumped him up out of the way and then proceeded to not even race him to the line just completely knock him out of the way in three and four it's like dude race it's called racing it's not called bumper cars like try to just try to race him if you make a mistake then you can wash up into him. But he did. He admitted he didn't even try to race him. He just decided, I'll take the, th- the second lane and knock him clear into the marbles. Like, I just, that's what I don't like. I want you to try to race the guy. And if you make a mistake, you make a mistake. But try, you know? So I didn't like that out of Ty Gibbs. And my other least favorite right now is Joey Logano. Always has been since I saw him dump Matt Kenseth and do those dumb things. Like, I don't know. I just... I've never been a fan of uh, of that style of racing where it's like if you're racing someone hard, you just punt them out of the way. I'm I'm not huge on that that aspect. I think you need to try to race the guy clean, and if it if it comes down to it, you can give him a nudge or, or rub against him. But you know, after Truex passed him clean for 40 laps at Martinsville. Uh, to immediately knock him out of the way, I thought that was just a cheap shot. That instead of saying, you know what, he bested me today, he earned that spot. Nah, I'll just knock him out of the way. Uh, not, not, not okay with that. Uh, Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, and I don't like Logano and Hamlin. I like, uh, I like Kyle Busch. I think he, I think Kyle Busch honestly is one of the most fair racers in the Cup Series. You know, somebody had mentioned on Twitter, I think Bob Pockris, uh, and Bob said, when was the last time Kyle Busch blatantly dumped somebody for a win? And that is a good question. When is the last time that Kyle Busch was racing for a win and blatantly, intentionally dumped someone? And the only time people can actually peg is Dale Jr. 2008, and even we all know, we all know that wasn't intentional. Now, Jr. fans don't like it. That's fair. I wouldn't liked it either. My driver got wrecked. But we all know by now that was not an intentional wreck. He did not intentionally spin Dale Jr., so what do I think of Alex Bowman? He's he's fine. I, I don't mind seeing Bowman win. Is Bowman a hack? No, Bowman's not a hack. Now, I do think Bowman needs to improve on some things, um, but he's not a hack. I just I don't think he's at the same level as uh, Elliot or Larson, but I don't know. The best way to put it is he'd be a great Xfinity driver, and he makes an okay cup driver. Like, he got four wins last year, but let's place it. that A lot of those were like, where did he come from wins? And that's okay, but that's not going to win you a championship. At some point, you're going to have to go out and dominate and show that you're the best car. So, uh, let's see. At least all, Ross owned it. I Yeah, I, I saw uh, how Ross took it. I thought that was great that he said it, but it doesn't change what Ross did. You know, at the end of the day, he's he's going to deal with that. Uh, Chase Elliott, Darlington 2020, that's one. Uh, but that, that wasn't intentional. I think we can all – I mean, it was definitely – 
like he definitely dumped Chase. That's that's not the question. The question is, did he intentionally turn Chase because he wasn't going to beat him? And the answer to that is no. Like Kyle made a mistake there. Um, he also did that to Martin Truex, where he just cleared off the corner and just misjudged it and made the mistake and wrecked a guy. Like, um, you know, that doesn't mean that he didn't wreck him, but I don't think that was intentional because they weren't even racing for the lead. With I think there was still a decent amount of laps to go. Yeah, he just flat out misjudged getting in line. Um, you know, so because spinning him out there doesn't do him much good. He needs, you know, he needs Elliott and Hamlin to battle in that next corner, and he can make a three wide pass on him or something, but. I get, I get what you're thinking, because it, it definitely was not a good look, but uh, I don't think Kyle Busch did that intentionally at all. Um, Chase Elliott is way overhated. Chase Elliott's only overhated because of his psychotic fan base. I'm one of the fan base, but I know that Chase Elliott has fan base that are absolutely off the rails. Like, one of them was literally calling Ross Chastain evil. Like, he's just an evil man that does these things. And it's like, okay, chill chill out, guys. <laughs> he's He made mistakes behind the wheel. Let's come around. Uh, I was coming around on Logano until he dumped William Byron at Darlington. I was there live, and then and there was not very many happy fans in the seats. No. As I said, I just, I don't, like, dude, race the guy. Why are you intentionally wrecking the guy? Come on. Um, Chase Elliott, 501, says it would, I would say intentional. Well, that's fine. I mean, you can have your opinion on it. I just, I don't think, I don't even think Chase thought it was intentional. I think he was mad, thought like, dude, come on, be better than that. But I don't think Chase, you know, I don't think Chase thought it was an intentional wreck of him. I just think he was mad that he misjudged it. Like, dude, you can't make that mistake. Like, you're a cup champion. You can't make that mistake. Be better. But again, I don't think he intentionally tried to crash him. That that wouldn't uh, that doesn't generally uh, happen where it's intentional. Because that's the thing, Joey has owned up to it. He has intentionally crashed Matt Kenseth. He has intentionally crashed, um, you know, William Byron. He has intentionally ran into the back of Martin Truex. Those are intentional. Like I don't care. I'm gonna hit you anyway. You know, those are the ones. So uh, I think Ross Chastain was just driving over aggressive and he kept making mistakes. And once, yeah, no. Um, I 100% agree. I don't think it was intentional that Ross did any of that. I just think at the end of the day, that's why he apologized. He know it wasn't intentional. If it was intentional, he wouldn't apologize. So I think he just made mistakes. He just overdrove over his head. And I'm guessing he'll talk to Denny and Chase and Michael McDowell and Joey Logano all this week because he ran into all of them. It wasn't just those two. Um, you know, and and apologize. And I think he'll still have to pay for it on the track. I don't think they're gonna totally junk him. But, you know, if Ross is coming through the field trying to get back to the lead, they're going to make it hard on him. And, you know, that's what's going to happen. So, um, you know, he's going to have to pay for it that way is when they say pay for it on track. So at some point, you know, he's just going to have to accept the fact that maybe that's why you don't drive over your head and get, get you know, wreck guys, because they're going to make your life worse later on the road. A uh, perfect example of that is Logano and Elliott, 2020. Uh, Elliott way overdrives the corner junks him and Logano at Bristol and the win goes to Brad. And what happens the very next week at uh, Homestead, Logano sits in Elliott's lane and blocks the dirty air and races him really hard, trying not to go a lap down. And then Denny Hamlin swoops on by, takes the lead and Elliott could never get the lead back. So it's a perfect example of like, yeah, I can get in your way. I can make your life worse. So don't do that again and race me respectfully. And they have, a, they've been fine ever since. So I, I think that's fine. Uh, I was a huge Chase fan and was upset, but again, I think Chastain is going to be fine in the long run. Uh, like you said, other than Logano, he's not necessarily doing it intentionally. Right. He's not doing it intentionally, but he's still got to clean up that, the actions. Uh, if Ross Chastain and Chase Briscoe in a drag race to the line, who do I choose? Um, right now I'm going to choose Ross Chastain. Uh, Chastain has been driving over his head, but he has, he has literally worked and clawed for every last opportunity he's gotten. Chase Briscoe is very much the same way. He, he has earned his way there. My thing about Chase Briscoe is when he dumped Tyler Reddick at Bristol, he clearly didn't learn much from it because he went and did the same thing at, at Charlotte and just went in and wrecked himself. Like Ross Chastain is not just going to wreck himself running for second. And so he's a more mature driver. So I, I think I, I will definitely like uh, Chase Briscoe. Uh, I just think he needs to mature as a driver so that he's not, you know, YOLOing it off into the corner and just not, you know, uh, spinning himself out. I, I don't think that that's a great option. But uh, you would choose Briscoe. That doesn't surprise me. You're not a fan. It's a teammate, you know, team forward. Um, I'd actually choose Almirola over Briscoe right now, too. I think Almirola is a smarter driver. But I do think Briscoe's got a bright future. Uh, really worried about Chase and the standings right now. I know we're going um, to a road course, but if Chase doesn't do good there, he's going to have a couple bad tracks after. For well, 
I don't think Nashville's a bad track for him. I think he'll be fine there. Um, I think he'll be fine at the road course. I don't know if he'll be a, a race-winning car, but he'll be a top-10 car. If Alan Gustafson chooses, they can score a boatload of stage points and maybe finish top five, which will be a great day points-wise that can help re-extend the point lead. So um, I think he'll be fine. He just had a lot of bad luck. I mean, you know, Charlotte made a mistake, got caught with the DVP, and, you know, he had a race-winning car at Charlotte. So lost that opportunity. You know, Kansas had a flat tire running top five, uh, was running, I think, eighth with fresh tires when he got wrecked at Gateway. So he's it's not like they've been running slow. they just bad luck. So I think he'll be fine. Um, do you think Junior Motorsports fields a truck team with Noah in, cup, in the Cup Series? I hope so. I think Noah is the right driver for the Cup Series. I think he's got a lot to learn yet, but I also think he is probably the most – um, the most talented driver at JRM at the moment. I do think Josh Berry is very even with him. I think both of those two are very good, very experienced race car drivers in terms of like their craft. I do think Josh Berry is more refined. I think you'd get more consistent results with Josh Berry. I think you have a brighter future with Noah Gregson. So I think he all, he's also more marketable. So I'd be fine with them putting two cars in the Cup Series, one for each of them. Uh, if Todd Gilland and Christopher Bell are in a drag race, who do I choose? I choose Christopher Bell. Uh, Todd Gilland had no resume that dictated him being in the Cup Series. I'm sorry. Same with Harrison Burton. Harrison Burton and Ty Todd Gilland do not belong in the Cup Series. Um, I, don't, I don't have anything against the drivers. I just think I don't like guys that get rides that don't earn them. I mean, Todd Gilland has won a grand total of, I think, two or three truck races. And he is a Cup driver? No, I'm not on board with that. I'm just not. Nope. Zane Smith was a more deserving driver. He's a more deserving driver in that 38 truck now. So no, Todd Gilland. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I want guys that have earned their way to the truck series and, or to the cup series and shown they belong there. And, uh, yeah, he has not. Chris Rebell won a boatload of races and everything he's been in. He does, you know, he showed why he's there. Um, you know, Harrison Burton didn't win a single truck race and got promoted to top tier Xfinity equipment. He did win four races in that his rookie year. And then proceeded to never win again and got consistently smoked by his teammate Ty Gibbs when he raced with him. So I knew he was not Cup Series ready. You know, at least when Noah was racing, you know, he did beat a couple of Cup guys. Not often, but he did beat them. So it's, I don't know. I, I'm just, I'm, I want guys that, you know, earn their way up there. Do I think Chase will win the, the regular season championship? I think he's got a good shot too. He's been the most consistent on race speed. Um, now there's some tracks coming up that I'm a little concerned about, but in terms of race speed, if Alan Gustafson tries to win the regular season title, and that means unfortunately at Sonoma, he's going to stay out and collect stage points at both of the stages and then try to drive through the field. I like his chances. And I actually like his chances. If they use that strategy, stay out at the end of the stage, start from the lead and try to drive as far away as you can on old tires, which you're not going to drive away, but when you pit, you'll be off cycle and it gives you a chance for something weird to happen. So I just think that would make a lot more sense. Uh, but anyway, if, if they try to go for points, I think they'll, they'll get it. They've been the most consistent on speed. Uh, let's see. I hope Noah would be the best fit in cup series. Um, at the, at the moment, I think is what you meant to say. Uh, want to be a NASCAR driver, boy. I hope, hope you've got some money behind you. Cause that's what it takes. You, that or you got to get a sim rig. You're going to need one or the other because that's the only way to get there. It's tough. Kind of biased take, but Blaney goes winless and but makes the final four. I don't think he'll he'll make the final four. Or sorry, I, just, I said that wrong. I think he won't go winless. He'll win a race. He's been too good at a lot of different tracks. I don't know where it'll be at, but he's going to win one. Penske's starting to find speed, and he's going to capitalize and get a win somewhere. Uh, let's see. Race craze. Who deserves a top tier ride more? Zane Smith or Todd Gillen? Zane Smith. It's not even close. It's Zane Smith. Um, it, I would pick him every day of the week. So, uh, anyway, uh, what was the other thing I wanted to show off? I showed you guys the next gen car. Um, uh, showed you guys the 124th next gen car. Um, is as weird as it kind of looks and feels. Um, I did show the race pin. Was there anything else I needed to show off? I don't think there was. So, I think it's about time I go get something done uh, on my website and get some stuff ready. So uh, anyway, the Joey Logano pre-orders will be up. Actually, they are up. I just need to share the link. So I'll be sh I'll create a post here after the live stream. The Joey Logano link uh, should be up, and we'll have both of the raced versions, 124th 
ARC and Elite available. And also the uh, the AJ Allmendinger race wins are being offered. And that Portland car is going to look really good. Highly recommend that Portland car. I obviously am going to get the Joey Logano car. I was at the race, so, you know, I have to. But um, that Portland car looks really good. So I highly recommend that for if you're an Allmendinger fan or not. That's going to be a really cool race version. So. Uh, both those pre-orders should be up already, but I'll I'll have some posts that I'll share um, with those links here in just a little bit. So I'll do a couple last questions, and then I'll uh, take off here. So excited for Sonoma this week. Denny wins. He ties Tony Stewart up 49 career wins, and Tony beat Denny for that win in 2016. So also Tony's in the booth, so perfect weekend. That would be a good weekend, although I don't think Denny's quite as good a road racer. So we will see. We will see. Uh, Cody Ware or BJ McLeod? BJ McLeod all day. Um don't mind to race for Rick Ware Racing, dude. I would. I'd race for anybody if I could. I don't care. I want to get inside of a race car. I I raced go karts. I loved the speed. I loved the racing. I, if I had the option to, I would have raced every day of the week. I, I would not have needed a day off. I mean, some people are like, eh, I don't want to race today. I want to do something else. No, I never had that problem. I wanted to race every day of the week. I wanted to race every class. Like. I didn't care. I was like, is there a way I can have three carts with, you know, three different motors so that I could run as many classes as possible? Like, I just wanted to race. Um, I don't think Elliot needs to flip Bush off. Also, I think um, I think I said I got my braces off, but I got them on. Oh, got them on. That's, that's less good. <laughs> but, uh, no, he didn't need to, but I think that also was a, you know – he did need to, to definitely at least speak with Kyle or, or show displeasure because you can't just sit there. I mean, if you get wrecked, you need to make sure the guy knows you can't just wreck me. I'm not going to just take an I'm sorry after you walk, you know, completely destroyed my race car. I'm not OK with that. So I don't mind it. I, I think it was OK. But uh, I like J.D. McDuffie. I uh, just want I just want to race. Uh, yep. J.D. McDuffie. Uh, just race as much as you can. Kyle Busch was like that. That's why I kind of I've I've grown I've grown to really like Kyle Busch and and Ross Chastain for that reason. It's like, is there a car I can race this weekend? Good, put me in it. I run a race. Just let me race. I don't care what I says. I don't even care if it's fast. I'll try and take a twentieth place car and race tenth in it. I just want to race. I don't care if I'm winning. Just let me race. Like, oh, those are my kind of guys. So, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the live stream. I will have some more reviews coming up later in the week. Um, should have a really big load of diecast coming in. Uh, sometime in this week, I would hope. Otherwise, it's going to be early next week. But we're talking metal chassis. We're talking 124th Elite, some race versions. We're going to have a boatload of cars coming in. And there's also a bunch of them on eBay this week. So if you're interested, there will be some Matty D cars. Um, there's a Dale Earnhardt car and some other stuff on the eBay page. So you can check those out over there. Um, and then, obviously, I, I still have all the stuff on the website. So uh, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. And I will see you in the next DieCast Review.